fucking Cat 6 cables. They're supposed to be delivered. It's like 9 o'clock now. Cat 6 cables. They're supposed to be delivered. It's like 9 o'clock now. Cat 6 cables. There's a little start with some of that action. I thought they were already delivered today. No, my my haven't my cables haven't come in yet. I'm waiting on them. Hmm. Your big hot steamy cable has not showed up. That's exactly it. Excellent. Oh, my you know what I forgot to do? My multicolored cables. My black one, my white one, my green one. Yeah, I said wow. green. You, you don't know need what I'm all into. those for. Don't you judge me. That's what I kind of do. It's what I that's what I like to do. Yeah, that's what you Canadians do. That's like your fucking you know pastime judging americans we're just trying to be righteous <laughs> free. i don't know don't listen don't listen to me i'm i'm, I'm a moron oh I'll man to... i just turned my camera off <laughs> all right uh what do we got going on here today okay so first off we're going to start with uh by smashing this bad boy Within each and every role player lives this homeless character who wants nothing more than to quiet the heartbeat of every living thing that stands in his way. Today we celebrate this all too familiar character with... Well now, looky here, it's the Murder Hobo Show. Oh, you gotta like that action there, huh? Welcome to the Murder Hobo RPG Show, a proud member of the Tabletop RPG Network. This is episode 22, recorded August 12th, 2020. I'm sitting in my basement being a big fat loser at 7.02 in the uh, in the evening. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm one of your hosts, Gary, a.k.a. the Murder Hobo, and I am here with none other and Uncle J-Raz, a.k.a. Captain Colon. What is going on, my main man, my sugar squeeze, my sausage nips? Man, it's your world, dude. It's your world. I just buy concrete in it, man. What can I tell you? You buy concrete? What do you mean? You, you, you've been yeah, buying well, concrete? Because you sell concrete, or you, you, you mass produce it, and you deliver it. So I'm just letting you know. You're king. It's your world, man. I'm just a, I'm just a customer, and you're in your big, broad world here, brother. Okay. I see how that works. Mm-hmm. You, want, you want me to come by your house and drop a load? <laughs> uh no <laughs> why not i, I got 10 well, then again, well it depends on what kind of it depends on talking concrete yeah sure if you got to drop a deuce i do have four toilets so you know but now, i love those four are clogged at any times oh, oh do you use them all is that a, is that a thing well there's one i don't use that's the one that's the one in the master bathroom uh and that's like i that's the wife's personal you know personal uh throne there so i don't want to i don't i don't want to disturb the queen's throne as right. it were uh, and then I, I have my own personal one upstairs and then there's uh there's one in the middle area that's a that's like the neutral one because me and the wife hang out in the middle area that's like our neutral area she has the upstairs i have the the basement down here and uh neutral area that's kind of like where we meet and that's like our meeting place and so that bathroom is neutral and then i have my other one down here so i actually I have two toilets man that's how that's that's how that's how large i'm living man Wow, so, so you got like the whole like North Korea, South Korea neutral zone thing going on. Yeah, it is kind of neat. Yeah, that's exactly what we do. We got the, um, yeah, we got the uh, the upstairs like in Dot and Abbey, and then we got the downstairs, and we all meet in the middle. Wow. Yeah, the is, you know, I'm, I'm the <laughs> servant good. down here in the middle, but that's where I are down here in the basement. That's, that's, that's yeah. how we do. Well, we do the same thing at my house. I don't know what it is. Okay. I, you know, the, the woman, the wit, my, well, my, I shouldn't say the women. My woman, uh, she doesn't want me going up and using the facilities that are hers because it ends up looking like I, I tried to do her a favor and vacuum and the bag blew up. You know what I mean? There's like dust and debris right. everywhere when I'm finished. So, yeah, yeah. The, the more I can stay away from it, the better off it, it it is. Yeah, it's better we have our own space, man. And just, you know, just for, for better living. Well, I like to think you know. that it's a hygiene thing, too. Like women are pretty messy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm hmm. Um, I, yeah, I tell you, man, yeah. half the time I get up, I don't know if I'm going to be pulling like seven foot long black hairs out of my underwear. And and mm. I know they're not mine because I'm bald. So it, I, it ain't me. Right. Yeah, that's <laughs> the thing, too. I do. Uh, I do look in the shower and I do see like a nest of, nest of hair there in the drain. And we got one of those little drain covers. So I just like oh, better pull this up here. I'm, you know, I'm going to be standing, you know, standing about what, what, about a foot deep in like 
shower water because of the, the hair in the drain. So yeah, and ain't mine. It, my hair is only about that long. So there you isn't go. that the I worst? I have my beard anymore. You reach down and grab like a small twig of hair, and then you pull out basically what is like a dead rat. <laughs> yeah, that's it's like oh man. In fact, you might read a, you might want to cue up the uh, incoherent rambling uh, uh, music. <laughs> <laughs> second, but uh, right, let's do it. <clears throat> yep. You got it. Incoherent ramblings. Wow, there it is, right out of the gate. What are we? Ten seconds into this show today? Oh yeah. So, oh yeah. My favorite thing to do is to clean out the shower drain and just see how much like nasty just gnarliness is in the drain and then i like show it to my wife and just watch her gag making my wife gag is one of my one of my true pleasures in my life because i don't know because we grew up like me my brother and my sister we all just think that's the funniest thing ever is like watching somebody gag and if i can make her gag and if i go back and tell my brother and sister about it they will all just cry laughing so that's a little past on mine that's a little insight in uncle jay raz's life if you guys want to know Wow. If I could make her go, like, and like hair in the drain is like a real quick trigger for her. And so I'll take it and go like this, oh, 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 like that with it. Cause I ain't scared of no hair. And she will start, like, I think she's going to puke one day when I'm just going to do it. Or I'm accidentally going to drop it in my mouth. And there you go. And she's just going to hurl all over the place. <laughs> I feel like you're a horrible person. And I'm really glad we're talking about <laughs> RPGs and not like porno at this particular moment. Right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. I got my, yeah. I got my problems, man. I'm, 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 I'm what they call, uh, what do you guys call it in Canada? You're like spare parts. Uh, I, I don't know. Is that what it's called? Spare parts? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. You're, you're spare parts, mister. You know, you're broke or whatever. Whatever they say, letter Kenny. You know, when somebody's really kind of a, you know, a DJ, you know, you're spare parts, mister. Oh my God. All right. Well, this is apparently supposed to be a podcast about role playing games in general. And uh, as uh, usual, you can see we're rambling incoherently in an attempt to sound like we know what we're talking about. And oh. uh, yeah, we're going to hope you don't call us on our bullshit. That's right. So uh, here's what we're going to go ahead and cover today. In fact, we're going to give back to the community. We haven't done this in a while, so we're just going to go ahead and dedicate this episode to you, the listener, and community questions. Um, mm -hmm. All five of you. And Bell. Yeah, all five. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're going to answer so, Bell's questions. <laughs> That's yeah. what we're going to do. Uh, what, what did you got going yep. on this week, Jay? What's happening? I know we got re Well, you got resting Sunday. I'm going drinking Saturday night, so I won't be there. We, we're doing this wine walk thing up at uh, Sunshine Valley. That's a lot of fun that we go to. We do all these, uh, uh, what do you call it, like little stations and stuff like that. And then when you show up, like last year, for example, we did Plinko. So you take your Plinko mm -hmm. token, you put it at the top of the board, and it goes ding, 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 all the way down. Wherever it lands, you'll win a prize. We had some dollar store like blowy things and and mm -hmm. you know party hats and whatnot that or if if it would land in like the wine we we had bottles of wines and you know different taste testing things to do mm -hmm. and I don't remember what else we did there was another oh there was there was some pepperoni because man who doesn't like like cheese and pepperoni you got to have the meat and cheese right. powder if you're doing the wine sipping right oh, so, yeah. so oh yeah. yeah we had we had that on the go but that's this weekend and I forgot all about it right up until like yesterday when my wife was telling me so. Doing that this weekend, no gaming Not for me. Bad. It's a little sad. I would rather do that at this point. And if I if I was able to go out and, and like just do some kind of activity, that would be kind of cool. Um, full disclosure, my wife has not left the house since like June. She's wow, not really? left the house. She's, yep, she's not left the house uh, since June. Um, we get a lot the bulk of our groceries from uh, Amazon Fresh now. I do go out and get go to the store occasionally. But no, um, I, I get a little stir crazy if I can't go out and, um, you know, if I can't go out and do something like, like, like at least like every other day, if I can't get out of the house and I'm just talking about running the store, or just getting in the car and driving. Um, but yeah, that's something we need to do is just kind of like see if we can figure a way now, to, you know, get out and that's, that's know, maybe, not your cover whatever. story. Cause you like, you know, ax murdered her or something. Oh, no, 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 no. She just hasn't left the house. I mean, you can, you know, you can, she's still on LinkedIn and everything like that, too. No, I haven't murdered. Nah, man. No, dude, I'm the one who's going to get murdered here. Let's be real, man. She's, she's, she's a princess, man. And look at me. I'm just the, the, the court jester. Blah, blah, blah. See, there you go. Wow. I haven't heard of Pearson in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I wonder how he's doing, man. I miss that old guy. Do you? Yeah. Do, oh, do yeah, you, man. Oh, yeah. Take care. I'm just arguing with him, man. It was just, yeah. it was just like arguing with your brother, you know, your little dumb brother about stuff. 
you know, who's always got this wrong opinion because he listens to to the wrong people in the wrong crowd or whatever. That's all right though, man. He's still he's still your little brother, and you like him, you know. So right, mm-hmm. even though he, you know he's got one eye and he licks ice cream all day long. Right, <laughs> that's true. And paints minis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's fantastic. Um, all right. So what do you got going on? You doing wrestling Sunday stuff? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do wrestling. In fact, well, I actually have my uh, my other wrestling game tomorrow night, um, the Gulf Coast one. Um, got wrestling going on this Sunday. And since there's just a handful of us now, I think I'm going to only do about like maybe probably do about two more sessions. And then I think I'm going to hand it off to somebody else. And then later on, I want to run the after. Ooh, I want to run, yeah. run the after and then more. I just flat out no. There's in fact I'm, I'm mark this mark this day, August twelfth, two thousand ten. What's the time here? Nine eleven p.m. That's the next game I'm gonna run for you guys. No deviations. I don't care what comes up. I don't care if like <clears throat> big titty green chicks from outer space with with flamethrower weasel faces, you know, comes out or something like that. Man, I don't care if that. I don't care if that's the next RPG that comes out. But no, the next one I'm gonna run for you guys is the after because it, you know. Hopefully, we're going to talk about that soon. Wink. Man, uh, I'll take the previous one, please. All right. <laughs> uh, I'm super stoked for that to come out, too. In fact, um, we're going to talk about the after. I, I, I was thinking we might yep. mention it at the end of the show, exactly. but we might as well just talk about it now. Next episode is going to be about the after, which is a new setting, yep. uh, new Savage World setting that came out uh, about a week ago, two weeks ago, something like that. Me and Jay have been reading it. And, and we uh, both kickstarted it. We were both yeah. backed as kickstarters. And um, I think, did you just go the digital route? I didn't get the print route. I, I think I just went straight digital with the with like the uh, um, the offer to get like a a print copy at like half off or something. Yeah, I, I think I did just the digital as well. I'm not 100 percent sure, um, but uh, you know what? It, it well worth the money that I spent on it, man. It, it is it is solid. Um, I'm, I'm excited to talk yeah. about it. And well worth the wait, too. You know, they said it was going to come out in December, and then they said it was going to come out, like, I, I want to say it was March, and then said, okay, it's going to come out in, you know, roughly maybe about June. And it, it ended up coming out, you know, maybe a week or so ago. But, yeah, it was well worth the wait. Really right. excited. COVID's just kicking yeah. the piss out of everything lately. That really kind of sucks. Yeah. Oh, I'm yawning. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I Put the this... damper on some... Uh, Put the damper on some uh, new Fantasy Age. That what, what I guess they would call it like the Fantasy Age new core rule book um, with the free port setting tied into it. Um, I was reading Green Ronin's uh, a blog about it, and yeah, I think they just you know they they didn't want to spread themselves too thin. But yeah, there's I, mean, I, I, I but then again, man, things are doing really well. Like in RPGs are doing really well right now. So I don't know, man. I'm not a business guy. I'm an RPG guy. Yeah, and a love guy. There you you're go. you're a lover, not a fighter. No, I'm actually, I actually fight the love or something. I'm a love fighter or a fight lover. When you're having like sexy time, you punch her in the face? No, I let her punch me in the face. That's sort of, that's what I'm getting into. No, oh. just now? Like, as a, that's a, that's a recent thing? Oh, no, I've been into that though, but I, that's what I, I just wanted to lay that out there. Yeah. So is it closed fist, open fist? Like, are we talking love slaps? Or we're talking broken noses, uh, bloody teeth and trips to the dentist? We got a wheel for that, dude. Yeah, a wheel, like a big, uh, like a big spin, uh, like a big wheel of fortune wheel, or you know, one of those big carnival wheels that you spin and whatever it lands on. That's what we're doing. Oh, I thought I uh, thought for I was like, oh, blue tie. Okay, I thought for a second you got on. Right, that's I thought what we're you, doing. I thought uh, you strapped yourself up. to it at first there, and like you know what I mean. You were naked and you're tied to it, and she threw knives at it. But it's not that's that another kind of slot wheel. on the. No, that's another slot on the wheel. The wheel is actually a slot on the wheel. We can get real meta with this if we want to. Wow. I think that's a little more information than I need to know. When right. I blow your mind, that's when I know I've won. Yeah, no, I, well, I'm just wondering here. Let, you know, like, let's, let's get into this a little for a half a second here. Now, if you were to be naked and you were to be strapped to, the, to this deal, uh, seeing that you're a bigger guy and she spins the wheel... Because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm just imagining that because we're, you know, maybe we're a little off kilter or off centered because we're kind of, you know, just big fat dudes. Do you think mm-hmm. you would you would end up like balls up in the air? And <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because you're right. Right. She'd spin you and you'd, you'd be like end up lopsided somehow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or you think I'd like slide off or something. But no, that's why you go to the big and tall store to get all that stuff. You get the <laughs> one that's made for the for the bigger people, man. It's you know, got it's the heavy duty straps. Better. 
<laughs> yeah, the world's starting to realize that, you know, there's not one size and not, you know, that not all things fit. So, you know, there's stuff for bigger people and everything like that. So, yeah, you just get that taken care of, man. Wow. Yeah. Um, other than the after, anything else pique your interest in the gaming community? I see the um, Deadlands, um, whatchamacallit came out. I said whatchamacallit. That should be a drink. <laughs> Um, yeah, the uh, the companion came out for pre-release, and I've been uh, I've been giving that a little whirl too. And of course, anything Deadlands related, I'm going to snatch up, and I'm just waiting at the you know just waiting at the bit for them to release everything, especially the uh, horror on Headstone Hill. You yeah, know? the box set's going to be sweet. I'm excited for that too. I think I actually yeah. might have to start making some, and I've been looking for um, some maps that I can convert inside of uh, Tabletop Simulator so that I can. You know, have a, a, a you know a sort of a a stash of pre-made three D maps ready to go, kind of a thing. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's what that's I'm really cool. On. Yeah. All right. Well, um, uh, I think I'm kind of done with this conversation. To tell you the truth, let's get over to uh, community questions and see what we got going on over there. Yeah, let's see what the listeners have to say to us instead of what we're talking about. Right. We, we do this all day long. Right. Here, let's let's do some of that action. Oh wow, what was that? <laughs> Community questions. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why that came up a second time. What a oh, hunk of what a hunk happens. of crap pro- show production we got going on here today. Yeah, we need to fire a goddamn producer. <laughs> wow. All right. I, see I'm you later. <laughs> Okay, uh, community questions. Uh, here we go. Yep. Question number one, Jay. Number one is going to be for you. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Do any other GMs have large problems when running your online games? I've been playing D&D for a few months, and eventually I decided to start the GM. I was writing my own campaign. The campaign was forced to start in the quarantine, and I didn't want to risk it. So we were just going to play online. I found the players are much less engaged when not in person. One of my players read out something from a book that he said he was reading as the session was going on. I'm not sure if it's just me as a GM or if any other GMs are having similar problems. Keep in mind, my group is only 13 to 14 years old. What do you think, Jay? Well, that last sentence sums it up, man. You know, 13, 14 years old, it's hard enough... It's hard enough with, I would imagine how hard it is now. It's hard enough being 47 and paying attention online sometimes, man. Imagine being just being a little 13, 14 year old kid and being inundated, man. Uh, You're inundated with everything and you're, you know, you can't sit still and you're expected to to listen to somebody, uh, GM. It's going to be a little difficult in that sense. But, uh, um, yeah, that's, that's probably the deal that, you know, you get, it's hard to really keep somebody's interest online if they're kind of like blase about it. You know what <clears> I mean? <throat> if they're just kind of like half interested. So I don't know. I have what do some, you think? I have some serious like squirrel. You know what I mean? Like sometimes I can't even read a thing. I'm trying to read the after. And then I, mm-hmm. I think to myself, Oh man, I gotta, I, I gotta go buy a, a trailer, like a utility trailer. And then all of a sudden mm-hmm. I'll be looking up utility trailers <laughs> and then I'm like, Oh man, I gotta go read the after. So I go back to do mm-hmm. that. And I'm like, oh, I wonder what the guys are saying on MeWe. And then I go shoot over there. And you know, mm-hmm. even right now, recording this show, I've got, I've got OBS open, I've got Audacity open, I've got Discord open. I'm trying to make sure that everything stays up and running. I'm watching the chat channel. I'm reading these questions, and I'm making sure that I like click the proper buttons. I got serious friggin' OCD. But yep. um, I find that even it doesn't matter that they're 13 to 14 years old. I remember we were playing a couple of weeks ago. And uh, you, you just realize that people aren't there. There was a couple of things that I even did. I, I was trying to, somebody will say yeah. something, and I'm trying to find music that goes with whatever it is that they were saying. Yeah. And I fade out, and I'm looking at YouTube for like a music clip. And then somebody's asking me a question. I, yeah, we, it was for wrestling, right? And I'm trying to find... Yeah. I'm trying to find ads or, you know, old timey ads that I can play for, for my music clip, you know, come down to, uh, you know, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy Smack's uh, bed shop and buy a bed. Cause you know, like right. I'm looking for old eighties commercials. And then you're yeah. like, Gary, you're Gary. <laughs> oh, oh, oh yeah. Right. No, it happened. Yeah, man. I, I give you a hard time, but no, it happens to me too, dude. Uh, uh, so I try to like make sure, you know, and I'm playing in Deadlands and, and, 
and when I when shit shit's not sideways, and try to play in your games on Sundays too. Um, yeah, but yeah, you just gotta. I mean, you just gotta have like the discipline to to, to pay attention, and, and 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 you know, and you everybody goes in with good intentions. Um, I hope, but some you know, it's real easy to go down those 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 rabbit holes, man. I'm 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 suspect of it too, so I can't mm-hmm. really. You know, yeah. you just gotta. I, you just gotta make it. You just gotta have some have some discipline, man, and just make sure that you're paying attention, or yeah, you know, or yeah. fake it really well. You know. Yeah, you're gonna have to find a way to live with it because there really is nothing else that you can do about it. The problem with playing online is you literally have access to anything that your brain can think of, and as humans, mm-hmm. as soon as you think of a thing, you're off doing it. Especially in today's day and age. You want to know what time it is in Tokyo? Like, you're not going to sit there and be like, oh, I'll have to remember to look that up when I get home. You know, you just pick up your cell phone and start looking at it. You know, it's like just things like that. And then when you're sitting here playing online in front of your screen, that it, mm-hmm. it, you, man, I, you can see somebody rolling it down a street seven ways from sideways. So you, you, I think it's the kind of thing that there is no solution for. You just sort of have to live with it. Yep. And just hopefully, like, hey, and just... Do a pressure check, man. It doesn't hurt to make sure that, you know, hey, everybody, is everybody on the same track or or, or do I need to cover anything? You know, because, I mean, it, you can't really fault somebody for, for drifting off. And also, to be 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 realistic about, just like you say, Gary, I mean, it's enough to get people online. But, yeah, man, people got, you know, people got other stuff on the brain. Like, you're thinking of, you know, you got, you know, you might have a job on the brain or whatever and you get a little sidetracked. So yeah, just pressure check, man. That's that's what I'd recommend. It's like, hey, is everybody on the same page? Uh, hey, did you uh, did you catch that so and so? Or hey, uh, Beeble Blob, do I need to cover that again? You know, it it's doesn't always, hurt to do that as a GM. Yeah, it's always Beeble Blob. That, he's the biggest yeah. pain in the ass player. Yeah, he's like he's sort of like I call he would be my Dan. You know. <laughs> no. Oh man, you know what? I got some sad news today at work. Come to think of it, oh, one of one of the oh, guys that? that I work with is is. Uh, leaving he's going to go work in a ready mail uh ready mix plant on the island and i'm like he's been there for five years richard is his name and he's a he's a good guy and the in the shit part is is you know like uh my, my old boss was i don't want to i don't want to talk poorly of him but he was he was a, he was a rough guy to deal with um mm-hmm. the, the thing is is being a rough guy he he got shit done you know yeah. like he, he, he was on the ball he was on point he was on you if you were screwing up mm-hmm. And it can be a hard pill to swallow when you're being yelled at and you're 30 years old, right? Like you're being yelled at oh, like, yeah. you're, like you're a teenager. But you realize when he when he when, or when he left and and sort of passed the reins, um, not to not to speak poorly of the guy that moved into his position, but you realize how good he is, you know how he was always on the ball and how things were always getting done. Um, the, and the way that things are happening at work right now, so much for this RPG podcast, right? Right. The way things are happening at work right now, it's not that they're bad. It's just that they just take longer. Like, mm-hmm. you know, if my old boss was in, they would have been done, done. So yeah, yeah. I, I, it's, it's uh, yeah. It's, so anyways, Richard Jordan's going to leave, uh, my buddy Richard. And, uh, you don't know what you're going to get is his replacement could be, could be Dan too. Right. Right, yeah, it could be a guy like, like you know, he actually didn't, he accidentally squirts in your truck, man. Thanks. Incoherent ramblings. We we knew this was going to be this episode. I mean, we're pretty much we're going to call it community question slash incoherent rambling. You know, it, this is what's going to happen. <laughs> I mean, but this is quality stuff though you're not going to get this anywhere anybody can answer an rpg question you go anywhere you want to to answer an rpg question but where else are you going to get like these these little insights Shush. into life you know right we I are, agree i mean we might be old fat guys but we're also wise fat guys and we also know how to get around stuff i mean you know i mean you don't get to be you know our age you know by being stupid or you do i don't know man <laughs> but still maybe it's i think it's pure luck to be honest you know what I mean? Was that? I said it's one hundred percent pure luck. That's what it is. Yeah, that's <clears> what it is. Luck and, and maybe a little charm. All right. So, question number two: Is this a good puzzle for opening a door? Question mark. All right. First, is, I want to say anything. No. If, I always like when somebody comes up and says, "Is this a dot 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 a good dot dot dot?" I always kind of like roll my eyes because you're wanting approval. Right. So let's get All into right. this. Let Let's roll here, Jay. 
I want to make a little present for my campaign, and I'm fairly new DM. So I'd be happy to have some help. So basically, there is something very important to the party is looking for. So so the MacGuffin is behind the door. Um, Mm -hmm. And it has to do with a pact that has been made a long time ago between gnomes, dwarves, humans, and elves. It's hidden behind a big door. I'd like to have a puzzle that has something to do with the word pact. Uh, and with the four languages of those races, the party knows all of those languages. So there will be a trick in not knowing the language, which is, that's step one in the right direction. Here's my idea so far. On the door, there's a picture of a gnome, a dwarf, a human, and an elf holding hands, or something that shows that they belong together and work together above the picture. There's four empty slots where something's missing. In the dungeon around this room, the party will find four stone plates with the with words on them. A dwarven word starting with the letter P that means he's got ass, assiduity, whatever. Is that a word? Mm-hmm. Assiduity? Mm-hmm. An elven word starting with A meaning magic. A gnomish word starting with C meaning success. And the human common word trust. When those plates are inserted into the door in the right order, the door opens. Do you think this is too easy? Once they figured it out... Uh, it's all about the first letter getting uh, getting those in the order that won't be so hard. Uh, and there aren't any other options for the four letters, but it's P-A-C-T is what it really is going to do, uh, or a spell. Mm. It's also really clear yeah. that those plates belong in the door. Can I improve this puzzle somehow, or do you think it's good as it is? First off, judge this puzzle, Jay. Let's judge this guy. You, you know, actually, it's not... A, what he's trying to do is not terrible. Because, it's, you know, if you play Skyrim and stuff like that, you see a lot of that stuff. You see where you got to go in and you got to spin the little um, the little uh, wheels or whatever and, you know, line up like the eagle icon and, you know, the, the plates that are that are somewhere on, in the game in that sense. And you've seen this shit. And, you know, this is, goes back to, you know, this goes back all the way to Greyhawk stuff, man. There's always some kind of puzzle. This isn't terrible because it's also like a Lord of the Rings puzzle. But at the same time, too... It's like you, I, you know how I feel about fucking puzzles in a, you know, in a, in a game, yeah, right? Yeah. How we feel um, about it, puzzles. Um, it's always a fairly new DM, so of course he's gonna go. Um, and that's how I, I, well, I remember, man. You want to, you, you want to come out with a clever, you know, a clever room or anything like that. I don't even think of rooms in that sense or anything like that anymore, because I, I think it, I think it GM it differently. Um, but uh. As far as a puzzle, it's not terrible. It's not bad, um, and it's fine. And I tell you what, and that's about. But at the end of the day, though, like these, how are they going to? I guess what what I guess the question I have is they're going to. How I guess are they are they going to use what uh what skills are are they going to use to uh to find these, or how's how are you going to incorporate skill checks and stuff like that? That's where I, where are the mechanics I guess going to be involved. Puzzles yeah. fine. But like, how are you going to like, how are you going to insert that in there? You know, if they're just going to go ahead and, um, I guess, uh, are they going to keep searching around, or how are they going to keep searching until they find these letters or anything like that? It seems like they can just walk around, grab the fucking letters, and, and, and stick them around. It doesn't seem like there's no failure in this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I think that's a good thing. I mean, if you're going to do a puzzle, it should be yeah. it should be simplistic. The problem with doing yeah. puzzles is you're you're relying on player knowledge, not character right. knowledge. And Correct. you know what I mean? So it, you can get these things where it's just like you would never, maybe you wouldn't know it. And then the problem mm-hmm. is, is now you're putting the player on the spot, not the character, mm-hmm. which, it, you know, some people don't aren't good with puzzles. They, they mm-hmm. shut down and, and, you know, it's not their thing. Yeah. So it's yeah. never a good idea to do puzzles. You know, the, the way that I, I've always said it before is d- describe the elaborate puzzle, but then just make it a simple check, you know, like... Mm-hmm. And, and that's sort of the best or, way to go. And if they make it, they make it. And the puzzle shouldn't rely. There should always be multiple ways to solve the puzzle. You either smash the shit out of it, cast fucking Dispel Magic, uh, or right. solve it, right? So that they can always get past the puzzle. Don't let it be the, yep. the be-all, end-all. But the, here's here's what I was thinking. So there, there's four letters, P-A-C-T. They're supposed to spell packed, and they put them up on mm-hmm. this wall. And it's kind of, it's, it's pretty good because you can't really spell anything uh, with packed other than packed with P-A-C-T. But what if they spelt cat P and thought they got it right? Yeah, exactly. Right? Now they, <laughs> there they go. Now they're off yeah, on a sidetrack cat. trying to find a you know some kind of cat where they're trying to get it, you know, the urine of a cat to solve the problem. Right. Because it says cat P. Or, 
or they or they spell cap they capped and now they're looking for captain america or you know or captain canada or something or a captain know? and they sacrifice him to the door yeah they do they sacrifice the captain you know the, the yeah whoever the captain is they go out there and they kill him and then you know and he's got poor wife and four children are you know are weeping and now his middle child seeks revenge see that's what you did mm-hmm. see that's what your puzzle did your puzzle murdered that guy what if his what if, what if they spelled tapica and now uh-uh. they think that's a guy's name right we got to go find this tapica guy because he's got yep. the key yep this is See, why puzzles are shit because you get people like me and you that are just like <laughs> who are who are what function, functional morons who can moron you know mm-hmm. who can moron the hell out of something like oh if you want to make something you know we will you know we will retard something up just let me tell you so there you go you know don't ever put anything past a player no that's you know? exactly it that's that's rule number two when it comes to doing puzzles man yeah. don't don't put anything past the player don't do puzzles. Uh, describe them as yeah. as you know elaborate machines with whizzing gears and you know cool uh, illuminated power yeah. sources and stuff like that, and and then just let the player roll an intelligence check or do a dramatic task if you're playing Savage Worlds or Touch even down right. Let me let me interrupt. Uh, let me interrupt you just really quickly here because uh, this is what I, what I wanted to get at. If you notice the evolution in a lot of RPGs is they've gotten you know they went to the, they went to the you know, in the early days, that's exactly what they did is they had puzzles like this to challenge the players. But then they started realizing that, that you know, it, it was more, you know, as you started taking the player so much out of, you know, a, a player out of the, uh, the equation of focusing on the character that they were playing, then they started, they started incorporating mechanics to facilitate stuff like puzzles in, the, you know, for, like in, in the form of skill challenges, you know? Mm-hmm. That's how you solve <clears throat> skill challenges. Um, dramatic tasks, uh, yeah, or forget or whatever the, they call them in, uh, oh, I forget whatever they call them in age, but you know, that, that sort of thing where, you know, it's essentially a skill challenge where, you know, you, you, you take your skill and you roll and you see how well you do, you know, certain, you know, you get a certain amount of, of, of successes to, to go on. And that's, that's the best way to do that shit, man. That's the yeah. best way you handle puzzles. Hell you, yeah. You do it mechanically and you narrate it. You know, and don't be, let, let's not be cute. It's not be cute. Um, I do want to say one other thing too. If you want to, you know, if you if you're not familiar with what a, like a dramatic task is, because most people play D and D and stuff like that, and, and you want to learn, uh, Savage Worlds has that has the dramatic task in it. It's really good. It's a matter of getting so many successes. You use your skills and abilities and stuff. But um, when we did the icons um, mm-hmm. um, setting, when we went over icons. I found, I found, or or I thought to myself, I really like how elaborate Icon's tasks were, and and yeah. how they 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 not only like in Savage Worlds it's just a dramatic task, but in Savage Worlds yeah. it can be like you need to gain this many, or sorry, in Icons it's like you you need to have this many successes, or mm-hmm. um, you know there was different kinds. You you need to have like um, I, I can't even remember all of them, but it it, it elaborated on them in in a way where there was multiple styles of doing the tasks. And I thought to myself, yes. this is, you know, this should be the resource for, for doing dramatic tasks or solving puzzles and stuff like that. Uh, that icons section was pretty good. It, it is too. And, and actually, because uh, it, what's funny too is mutants and masterminds totally lacks that. In fact, I had to invent my own skill challenges when I ran mutants and masterminds. And so I think Steve Kenyon kind of sort of like, all right, where I dropped the ball on, on, on this sort of thing, I'm going to go ahead and make up for it here. You know? So, uh, so yeah, that's a real that that really kind of set like the a bar kind of like um, or raised the bar a little bit in form in that form of like skill challenges and dramatic tasks it, to that effect. <clears throat> um, Excellent, pretty neat. Yep. All right, question so, number three. Here we go. Should I throw a green hag at a level one party, or is it too much? Let I'm me getting... read that one to you because you know okay. more about green hags. All right, let's do it. All right. Getting ready to DM my first game of 5e, and I want the first boss to be a green hag. The party will be a deep gnome cleric, a hobgoblin fighter, a goliath barbarian. I'm also considering a troll instead. Would that be better? Um, No. Okay, so (laughs) 
I'll tell, <laughs> tell you. Tell me why. about these green hags. Okay, so a green hag is basically just like a druidic witch lady kind of a thing, right? She's one of the fae, uh -huh. one of the fairy folks. She's demon touched. There's a bunch of different ones and stuff like that. Green hags live to be hundreds of centuries old. Now they'll go into town, steal some babies and stuff like that, and then they'll bring them back, eat the babies, and then a couple of weeks later they're shitting out little twin babies of themselves. Mm -hmm. um, the thing with the hag is, is they're not, uh, they are sort of the apogee of, of, uh, of hate and, uh, and evilness, I, I think is the word that I'm looking for, but the, the, they're, they're like the epitome of not nice is what they are, but you can, you can appeal to them, um, by not sort of blowing their guys, right? Like if you, they'll come at you in the guise of an old lady that lives in a, in a, in a cottage, now, if you have prior knowledge that this is a green hag, you're fine because you're going in at level one with the idea that you can sweet talk this old lady if you just sort of uh, appeal to her, sort of her charisma kind of a thing, right? Her her sense of person. Um, so I don't think it's too much for a level one party. They can talk their way out of it. And even if they do get into combat with her, she can run. D&D &D needs to throw out this idea of of CR, combat ratings and shit like that, get that shit out of there. There is no such thing as a fucking fair fight ever in life. You're either getting your ass kicked or, uh, you know, you're kicking ass kind of a thing. You know, you don't just sit there and come to blows with somebody and then after punching each other in the head five times, walk away and say, okay, let's call it a draw, right? That's not how, that's not how life works. And D&D &D shouldn't work mm. like that, even though it's a game. So here's what yeah. I will say. The troll instead is a worse idea because all the troll will think about is killing and eating those players. It's dinner time. Actually, that's actually almost, I want to say, kind of not true. Trolls live under bridges. You you might be able to buy a troll off with some coin. Mm. That might be a thing. I, you, that would be another way to go about it. But there's a pretty good chance that the troll being sort of the mindless savage that he is, uh, that he's just going to eat some faces and, and turn your party into uh, sandwich spread. That's what I'm thinking. There you go. You, th this comes from a guy who has ate, slept, and breathed D&D &D for the past 36, 7 years or so. 41. So, uh, <laughs> 41. Well, there you go. I was, I was giving you a little more credit, man. I was going to say you were that old, but geez. But no, that's somebody who has it, it, been playing D&D &D since he was, you know, got his first non-urinary erection. So there you go. <laughs> wow. That's probably a true mm -hmm. statement, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't think I got a boner till I was nine or ten. Yeah, Actually, see, there, I mean, that, yeah. I have kids. I know that's not true, man. I don't know why babies wank your like they always like pulling on it and stuff like that. But that is an early learned <laughs> behavior, man. My kid could not yeah. stop touching his junk. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I've been around my nephews and, and and nieces when they were babies. In fact, yeah, I, I practically raised them and everything. And been been around babies, so I've I've had my fair dealing with them. But yeah, that's true, man. Little boys, they love to pull on that little wiener, man. That's, it's a, still, that's a, like a little yeah. gear shift, man. Right? It's almost yeah. like there's like there's something there. Because when you're a baby, you yeah. can't lift your head up to look at it. You can feel yeah. it with your hand, and you're like, what is this appendage? And then yeah, you start you pulling have... on it, and you're like, why ain't it coming off? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you got to keep that little buddy, and then you realize you pee out of it, and there you go. And then realize a little later that, you know, it's kind of fun to touch. So, you know. Mm -hmm. Feels good. So, alrighty. There you go. That's all I'm going to say about that. All yep. right, man. I'm going to read this next question off to you there, brother. Let her rip. All right. How should I handle a player character? Uh, how should I handle a player player's character after the player leaves the game? One of my players is moving away, so the characters left uh, left me to deal with. I think it might be a good way to introduce a BBG by having him kill the character. What do you guys think? <clears throat> Why would you do that to your friend? That's just an asshole move. What if he comes back? What if you guys want to play online at some point? And all of a sudden, he's like, hey, where's my character? And your canon now involves him getting his face pulverized, but, you know, in, in the butt cheeks of an ogre kind of a thing, mm -hmm. right? You, you don't do that kind of stuff. Handling players leaving the game is massively easy. They retire to a farm, tired of tired of the life. Uh, they stay at the inn. Uh, you know what I mean? They just sort of fade off into the woodwork. I will tell you, there is um, a podcast that I used to listen to uh, quite some time ago. I'll have to oh, pretend wizards. And um, it, it, it's a fantastic podcast. If you if you listen to it like the first, the first episode to, I want to say I listened up to about 
a hundred plus episodes of this thing. But the, the 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 narration was fantastic. The, the game master was really good at describing you know things, especially because when you listen to podcasts, it's theater of the mind. But the, there mm-hmm. was a scene that dealt with this where one of the players was leaving the um, or not the players one of the one of the characters was leaving. And the world that they lived in was sort of like a, like a circular city kind of a thing with different sections. Like a pizza slice was one slice of the pizza was the artificers area. Then you had like, you know, the fighters area kind of thing. Anyways, um, they did this scene. They role played this scene where he got on this transit bus and he said his farewells to everybody. And then the bus, he just sat down on the bus and the bus just drove off into the distance, and and that was it. You, you don't have to have like a solid ending. Um, mm-hmm. If you want to do some drama, and it's okay, I, I would recommend or I would suggest talking to the player before you just go kill his character, because maybe he's cool with it, and then you can introduce it as a shocking way for uh, this player to die. This is option number two. Uh, the big bad just just brains him like um, brains him like. Um, the Living Dead or The Walking Dead, brained brained the the Asian brained old Glenn. Oh, Glenn, yeah, brained Glenn. Just brain him like that. Eyeballs pop out, you know, blood pops out of the ears, and and go that route. <laughs> or 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 you figure out that the uh, the character was the big bad all along. <clears throat> Just playing him like like a fiddle. Yep. You know, like you, you can swerve the whole thing, man. You you can do all that, or you know, you take the player character and you just yeah, you swerve. I mean, you make you make that guy, you make that player character. You know, he's still a part of your game, and you know, he's just an NPC now. In fact, or or I would, you know, that's what I would do. I was like, all right, hey, how would you be cool with me doing this? And hopefully, the player would be like, yeah, man, if I can't play anymore or I can't come back, yeah, oh, oh that would be awesome. Because if somebody, if the GM said that to me, is like, I'm gonna, you know, you can't play anymore. Um, how about I take your character and make him the, you know, uh, the, the, the arch nemesis of the whole thing. I'd be like, hell yes. I got, uh, in my, my games that I play my Sunday morning, my Sunday one shot that I need a new name for. I think I'm thinking just Savage Sunday games is what I'm thinking. Yep. Uh, anyway, that's a good one. Sidetracked again there. Uh, in my Sunday games, I've had uh, Jennifer Judd. She was playing and she's gone now because mm-hmm. she's, uh, started like a little side business. We're going to get some sweet, um, Wild die, um, uh, what do you call them? Rollouts, kind of a thing. Yeah, those uh, those little uh, travel, or I guess so. Yeah, those travel kits or whatever. Uh, yeah. the, the GM are the player kits. Nice, right? Eh? So, so, yeah, uh, she's she's looking into building those with the with our. She's very talented. Rubble. Oh yeah, it's going to be fantastic. But she's off doing that, so she had to sort of bail on the game. She'll be back at some point. She, you know, I play an open table, um, but. Um, She's just in the inn. She just hangs out in the inn. You want to go talk to her. She's there kind of a thing, right? Um, we've got um, uh, uh, Matt Stark, our buddy Matt Stark. He was playing. He's been in the campaign from the beginning. Uh, with the Coronas coming around, he had to go night shift, so he had to leave the game. And when he, he'll come mm-hmm. back, but he just went off, and he's working on a tavern that he's building. He's actually building a brothel in, in mm-hmm. the world of New Haven. So, you know, his character's off doing that over the, the, the couple of months that he's Right. Uh, he's not there, right? So it's easy to think of things that you can yeah. have your players go do, and then you know maybe right. not kill them off. Yeah, right. And Wayne, my character in your game, he you know little Wayne, he drops in and drops out. And of course, that's kind of yep. his lay motif. Yep, and he's he's, he's a crazy little little hobbit druid man. That's what his he. There's no telling what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, you don't know where Wayne's at. Nobody puts. I Wayne don't know in the where corner. Wayne is. No, you can't <laughs> handle Wayne. Oh man! All right, where's um? What's going on here? Uh, All right, I got a, I got another question for you. This is a good one. Let me say, I want to see how you answer this because it it ties into uh, your love of uh, the uh, Fifty Fathoms here. Uh, making boat travel interesting. My homebrew world is on a bunch of islands. <coughs> Charybdis. Uh, there is a there will be boat travel. Any recommendations on making boat travel interesting? Yes, don't. It sucks. <laughs> Hi, man. <laughs> um, boat. Uh, I'm telling you right now, like the and, and see if you, and see if you agree. With me. I've I've played a I've played a handful of games, and this goes back to uh, oh hell, what was it like D20 Modern, and then it really crept into like Starfinder later on, where they incorporated like starship combat and this whole mechanic. It was the worst fucking thing I had ever had to deal with 
And then people are like, oh, I want to use this for naval ships. Or I'm like, well, good, go ahead. I ain't playing. <laughs> You're going to be playing a boring-ass <clears throat> game. <laughs> yeah. you know? Wow. Um, I no, played... I'm... Go ahead, Jay. Say it. No, no I, I, no, I was waiting on you, man, because okay. I, I just like... <laughs> Here we go. I played the 50 Fathoms plot point campaign not once but twice, and I did mm -hmm. the boat travel because the first time I played it, we made it to the third plot point campaign, which was literally like four or five sessions. Uh, in mm -hmm. between those sessions, in my little notepad that I have, I kept track of day by day. So day one, we roll the dice. Uh, this is sort of how it works. You roll the dice in your, uh, your with your boating, so you take the sort of the average of everybody that uh, has a boating skill because everybody in the party is, is helping out. So then, then you'll say it'll be like, say you got a D6 in boating. So you roll your D6, uh, you beat the target number of a four kind of a thing, and then uh, this is how it works in Savage Worlds 50 Fathoms. And then uh, it, depending on how well you roll, like if you, you know, you roll, if you get a success, you travel X amount of squares. If you get a raise, you travel a little bit more because things went your way. Do that every day um, for the first little while, and it wasn't too bad. Uh, and then you're tracking rations because you've only got so much water and, uh, and other things that you can do. Uh, so for the first part of the campaign, it wasn't too bad. And then, you know, we again, we died after the third plot point campaign. The, the boat blew up and game w turned PvP, and it was it was game over. Um, so, uh, so I wasn't at this point... Um, disenfranchised with boating <laughs> it was still interesting <laughs> right i was like okay this is still kind of cool um let's fast forward a couple of months where i picked it up again with a new group of players and for um almost nine ten I, well i probably made it to about double the time seven seven plot point campaigns into it i was like no i'm done uh, i can't do this well, i i can't be rolling every time to see how far your boat gets to see if i'm like this is boring as all f uh, you know, and I'm mm -hmm. keeping track of days. Oh, d day 31, we're traveling from, you know, Bandit Cove to some other place on Charybdis. And, and it's like, you know, it's seven days to get there kind of a thing. And it's like, uh, there, <laughs> there, there is no way to make travel. Interesting um, things can happen when you travel, but there is no way to make travel interesting if that makes sense. Like, it's just the mundane parts of the mechanical game that... Are, that are sucky like you know just make one roll a standard d20 whatever dude you know whatever system you're playing and if you succeed you you travel fine nothing happens if you fail mm -hmm. like a critical fail or something like that uh you mm -hmm. get bombarded by other um another boat coming at you kind of a thing but or you get you know you get overrun by say some kind of like sahagwin or something like that attacks yeah. you put it put in right. put in something that way but the travel yeah. part of it itself pfft, I fart in its general direction. Um, man, uh, I. It's funny, like a lot of modern game designers, they they realize this too. I think a lot of early ones, like in the '90s, they said, "Okay, man, we need a mechanic. For, we need a mechanic for this, so we're gonna go ahead and incorporate all this downtime and all this other stuff too, and make it interesting." Whereas, like later on, like later day, um, game devs are like, "Man, just make a roll or make a damn, you know." or pull a card, and, you know, in Savage World's case, and just narrate that crap and see what happens. Like, travel, the way that they do travel in Savage Worlds, I really like, because uh, what you do is you pull a card, and, you know, depending on the suit, you know, something happens. Like, if it's a heart, something good happens. Or in diamonds, like, you, you get, like, treasure, heart, or something. And you can narrate that any way you want to, man. And so that's all I like doing. It. It's just like, all right, one day, flip a card. Okay, all right. Here's clubs. Oh shit! Something's gonna happen to you. So that's like so you're gonna have you're gonna have an encounter. The clubs comes up. So have an encounter on standby. That's what I did when I was running the the Vietnam game, man. As I anytime we traveled, that's what it was. Is I would just draw a couple cards and see what was gonna happen, and I'd have everything laid out. You know, it's easy. I know. You don't have to do it like that. You don't have to do it like that. I mean, you don't have to make everything long, you know long and drawn out. Man, keep it simple, stupid. That's the best way to do this shit. <laughs> uh, I would recommend spending the $10 on the 50 Fathoms PDF and just using that. Um, don't use mm -hmm. the actual travel rules because it's not they don't suck. I don't want to say that, but uh, right. just use the um uh, use the uh, this is the the event or the thing that makes the travel part interesting. Hank mm -hmm. Hank uh, from um ICRPG got it nailed down with Warp Shell, uh, and I thought this was pure genius. In Warp Shell, you're actually aboard a sentient ship. It's like a, it's sort of, 
I don't know if it's fleshy or if it's, you know, half and half or it's it's kind of organic and it has a brain and it can think. The ship takes you where it needs you to be. So the travel part mm-hmm. is all done for you. You just uh, the ship comes out of warp space where the adventure happens. So all mm-hmm. the traveling stuff is just you in cryostasis, right? You, at the end of the adventure you go into cryostasis and kapoosh, you pop out ship comes out of warp drive and you're where the next adventure starts and i'm like i actually really like that because it solves all trying like this how do you make it interesting you just you get right. rid of it is how you make it interesting and get to the interesting stuff mm-hmm. that's 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 what you do but yeah other than that to answer i'm answering your question by telling you not to do it but if you do want to make it interesting look at the 50 fathoms pdf there's a bunch of ideas in there for adventures and things that can happen in the sea and making you know um yeah. combats or, or you find sunken treasure or you know what i mean stuff like that 50 fathoms has got a boatload of information in it for exactly what you're looking for but my suggestion is don't do it it gets mundane get to the adventure mm-hmm. yep have like a little encounter <clears throat> have them get a little treasure or something make yeah make it as as simple as possible maybe you maybe they got to deal with some pirates or some mermaids on the way but yeah just yeah keep it going because that's where the, the meat is there man you don't want to you don't want to fill up on on bread and uh, bread and soup and salad. Right. You know the travels I mean? the travel is the salad of the of the role play right. experience, right? right? It, yeah. Like well, it's downtime. Downtime is the appetizer. You can do a lot of fun stuff with downtime, but I think there needs to be a mechanic. I'm, I'm just gonna say this right now. Down there should be a mechanic with downtime. Otherwise, it's gonna spin off into somebody into letting your players, you know, you know, mentally masturbate and do whatever they want to and. It's gonna get really. It's gonna get really weird, and, and unless that's your, if that's your jam, go. You know, go for it, man. If you just want people whacking off all over your game, that's fine, man. That's that, that's not. It's not me. I don't really care for Bukaki in my game, but that's all right though. Um, that's why I vacuum seal all my RPG books. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, I don't think we've ever. <laughs> uh, I think we should. That's the first time we've ever mentioned Bukaki on a on, on our on our show. So there we go. Wow. Woo, I did, we won. But insert, anyway, uh, <laughs> an applause there somewhere. <laughs> Right. We yeah, we get an award. But anyway, um but that's what it seems like to me a lot of downtime. Um but you know, if that's your jam, the, yeah, I, I hear I'm not going to knock how you play your game, man. And, you know, it's it's, it's it's a big it's a big great world. You you play it the way you want to, but to me downtime gets a little um gets a little masturbatory and I I just want to move past it. <clears throat> it's funny because I was talking to uh Sean Kelly the other day. He was uh, mm-hmm. Twitch streaming uh his Delta Green prep game. And I was at work on a Saturday morning and I was watching him or listening to him as he was prepping his game and stuff and I got to talking to him. And and I find that usually when I listen to podcasts, other people's podcasts, they'll come up with like, like the other day I was talking about Savage Interludes and how on Savage Interludes they were talking about the problem with the audio when you're playing online. Uh, everybody's speaking at once. There's not very good control with the room and all of this other stuff. And they're like, you know, as soon as everybody starts talking, you don't hear anybody because some will get lowered and some will get boosted and it just becomes a mess, right? And then if there's, if you don't have that direct confrontation or or you're not directly in front of people, not confronting them, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, and and maybe pointing or giving those, those physical uh, signals to each individual person then they're not being those little subtleties aren't being picked up on so and so anyways gaming and bs is the same thing as so i was just talking to sean and i'm like it's funny because anytime i hear a problem or, or game masters talking about problems they have i, I mm-hmm. always think to myself at least 90 percent of the time icrpg fixes that you're just talking about downtime ICRPG right. fixes this and it's mass easy. You just start with the first player. You're like, what are you doing over the course of the next hour while you drive, ride your horse from point A to point B? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to learn a spell. All right, give me an int check and learn your spell over the course of the next hour. Uh, I'm going to pay attention to what's going on in the bush. I'm like, okay, make me a wisdom perception roll. Uh, and then if you succeed, uh, if you'll, you won't get ambushed if, if something happens, uh, you, you can expand that over the course of say like an hour, just go to a week. What are you going to do while you're in town over the course of the next week? Um, uh, one of my players is like, I'm going to go see the blacksmith and I'm going to see if I can't get this dragon scale armor converted into something cool. Okay. Let's go talk to the blacksmith, make me a charisma check and see if you can't persuade him into building you some armor. And then we just negotiate a, a couple of things. Depending on the charisma role, the, um, will determine the quality of 
what the blacksmith is willing to do, right? If you succeed, he's super excited that he's got this black dragon scale armor to work with, and he's going to build you like the best suit of scale armor. This happened in our last game. Uh, and if you if you don't or do well on it, he'll still make it for you, but he's not going to be that enthusiastic about it. And then that yeah. that takes the week of downtime. That's what you're doing. You know, you're eating, sleeping, mm -hmm. pissing, shitting, farting, drinking, and waiting for your armor to be made. The next person's going to yeah. go research a new spell while they're in town. Okay, let's go do yeah. some research at the library. Like ICRPG just almost always seems to have like some kind of weird answer for problems that are created in the game and it and it fixes things in such a simplistic way that I always highly recommend it. Anyways. Yeah. Let's do Yeah, there Go ahead. Uh no, I just there anytime that there's a mechanic for downtime, I'm all about it because I don't want to man, I don't want to sit and have to role play somebody's like um where somebody's writing in their diary about their long lost uh you know, their long long backstory. So especially if we're playing some fantasy bullshit or anything like that too. You know, I don't a side quest is always fun, you know, but that's where, where you get the whole party involved. But you know, where we gotta go around and like worry about, you know, all this stuff and everybody role plays it. Nah man, let's have a mechanic, man. Let's draw a card, move on. Blah, blah, blah. Right. I, I do like the drawing cards because there is something lately about leaving it up to fate. Uh, I, I don't mm -hmm. know what it is lately. I've been. Uh, I was talking about that Seth Saworski guy that I was that that did that right. video on fudging the dice, and then I heard yep. somebody else talking about fudging the dice and stuff like that. I'm like, mm -hmm. and the whole, the whole point of playing these games is because you're you're letting like random chance dictate where the story yeah. goes. You know, depending on your idea of how you want the story to flow. Um, you, you take mm -hmm. an example like you walk up to the to the lettuce vendor. Uh, and mm -hmm. you're going to murder Hobo his ass, or you're going to use your charisma and try and talk to him and see if you can't persuade him to do a thing. So you're either you're going to threaten him, and, and this is where player agency comes in, right? You, you let the players decide, I'm either going to threaten him, I'm going to bribe him, or I'm going to kill him. <laughs> Those right. are your choices. And then depending on which one you choose, we're going to roll the dice to see how well you did in that specific category. And that's mm -hmm. where the story goes from there. Um, yep. So yeah, I'm a big fan of leaving it up to chance. Flip a card. You know, I especially yep. like cards too because you can whip them real fast and sometimes, you know, right. stick them into people's foreheads like ninja stars. Oh, yeah. Yep. Well, yeah. you know, flip a card, roll on a table, man. That's how you do your downtime. You don't, and, you know, and, and as far as, you know, what you're talking about, like boat travel and everything, travel equates downtime, man. You just you get it going and get, get to get to where the meat is, man. Like I said, man, that's just app, that's just the bread. And that's like the bread sticks and the goddamn crackers they leave on the table for you, man. You don't want to get full on that. Yep. Why is you not going to watch your steak and your steak's going to get cold? And then you're just an asshole for eating a cold steak. Man, back to the last question too. Do an interlude. Have have a player yep. tell a story for a prize or a benefit. Yeah. Something like that, that's, right? That's man, a good role-playing opportunity right there. That's what I, I mean. That's what we do. That's what we do in the rest <clears> of the game. So um, the next question was written in by UJR. Uh, I'm, I don't know who that is. but I'm not uh, sure who that, that guy is. UJR. All right. Hmm. The question is, my players pay no attention to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, poor fella. Pretty, yeah, pretty poor much guy. the title. He says, I run a group of four players. All of us are in high school. Whenever I'm talking or it isn't their turn in combat, they just start chatting to whoever's next to them. They don't care about any of my plot hooks. They don't try to follow up on anything unless they're told by an, or told to by an NPC, and they never care about anything. One of my players is new, and he's been really good, but I'm also worried that he'll think that this is the norm and join in with the others. What do I do to make them participate more? Um, you always want to reward good behavior, you know. So I would like. Whoever, if if your player is doing really well, then you you make you you make the game about him. You put the spotlight on him. Now, are you saying things like you know you want to reward good behavior, so you you go over and jiggle his dice, kind of a thing, or? Oh know? no no no! Like you say, you put the spotlight on him, or you you know you give him like I don't know, like you reward him with bennies or some sort of meta currency or something. Yeah, something bag of that Cheetos. Effect. Yeah, no, you don't go over. You know, if he wants a little pickle, tickle. No, I mean, I'm. I mean, again, that's your business. You go ahead and do that. If you ask me to do that, hell no. But um, you know, <laughs> you do. Uh, what I you tell do. you, if if I got a pickle tickle every time I stop paying attention, I never pay attention. <laughs> right. 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 I'd no. So you want. It. So I would reward you for paying attention. I would. You know, I would tell somebody to. You know, tell your dog to. You know, or, or you know, somebody to. You know, give you a little love or something. I don't All know. All right. Well, during but, the pickle tickle, is there eye contact? Man, if you like, it, it's your reward. You you dictate it. 
Can I cup your cup your man boob? If you need to, man, whatever you need to do to uh, to feel rewarded, you know, we we'll, we'll just let it happen in the moment. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, that sounds good <laughs> to me. Uh, so, yeah, reward reward good behavior. That's that's number one. You got anything else? Or what else do you do? Or just like man, or, or you know, if you reward good behavior, I mean, that's always a positive. But then, if you know that people are are, are, are fiddle fucking around, you say, hey. You know, well, are y'all want to play or not? You know, because I can shut this thing down and, and do something else. You know, yeah. uh, you know, I suggest getting a slingshot and some gummy bears. Anytime yep. you see somebody, you know, not paying attention, just flap slingshot yep. gummy bear to the face. Man, I used to play back back when I was in the army. I used to play with uh, one of my shop sergeants and his wife. And so there'd be like three of us, and maybe you know another person, another you know another. Um, or one of our friends or whatever would come by or something like that. But it was mainly like three or four of us. But man, when I wasn't paying attention, he was a big dude. He just slammed it. You know, he would do that. And he'd just slam the table and be like, Rush. and I'd be like, fuck, all right. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm not going to, you know, not pay attention. So <laughs> that's when you're, you're hyper focused. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that, well, that's, well, that was how Sergeant <clears throat> Rosenthal handled it, man. You know, he, he was a big dude. So there you go. It's kind of a, a shitty situation that you find yourself in when you have people that aren't paying attention and just chatting with the person next to them. That that mm-hmm. is such a lack uh, or, or of, of respect. You know, it's, it's very disrespectful, mm-hmm. I think, uh, especially considering how much time and effort game masters put into their games. Um, mm-hmm. I don't I don't mind when it happens, but if it's consistent, like mm-hmm. something's up, man. That's I'm I'm just I'm I'm either packing my toys up or I'm getting rid of the problem player. One of the two. It just depends. If it's one person, you're you're not invited back. I'm I'm done with you, right? Like I I spent three or four hours reading, prepping, making stuff, mm-hmm. setting this up, and I show up and you're talking to somebody. Phones is another thing that gets me. Yep. Now, I, I don't mind yeah. you know if the the odd deal here. Your phone beeps. You look at it and you set it right back down. That's not an issue. But man, when I look at over at somebody and they're on their phone, not paying attention, what's going on? Come mm-hmm. on, man. Come on. You came here to play a game. Put your phone down. Shut your outside life off. Get involved in the story yeah. a little bit. It's going to be better if you're yeah. paying attention as a player. This is not a James problem, man. This is a player's problem. I think some it punches is. in the head are in order. Yeah. You know, lay down. Lay, layeth the smack it down, as Sir Rock would say. Yeah, that, that's what you got to do. And also, man, I mean, if it's a game where you're actually playing in person, man, a good... A good whap to the back of the head, man. That's a good way to get somebody's attention. Um, what else we got in here? There was Slap that uh, onion. There um, was. Uh, I think this. I think it's question number nine. This is going to be the last one, but but we're going to do this one instead. Oh, um, is I think this might be the one. How do you like to run deadly encounters where the location is possibly the most deadly aspect? So I've got some players coming up on a fight or or coming yeah coming up on a fight and it's looking like it'll either be on a cliff or a bridge or across a very large can, canyon any special rules or scenarios you like to use in this circumstance I can easily see one of the players going for a grapple shove over the side and I'd like to have uh, one enemy going for the same tap tactic once things get desperate uh, if you have any fun variants or things to watch out for, let me know. What do you think, Jay? The location is the deadliest part of the encounter. Hazards are always cool. I always like a good hazard. I think that's always a good, you know, you know putting putting your players in a precarious place is good. I know a lot, like, the, the, good, the thing you got to remember, though, is you don't want to put them in a situation to where, like, um, if they, if, if they do happen to fail, like if they're on a cliff or something and they have to make a grapple and they, and they fail and they roll though, I, I don't, you kind of put them in a situation where like, Oh crap, then they're going to die. It's like a save or die situation. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That would have been my advice. And, don't do that. Yeah. I mean, I like <clears throat> that. Yeah. You don't ever want to put them in a situation where, yeah, where it's all or nothing, you know, you, but you, you can damage him, you know, or you're, you can, you know, you can make it difficult for him. Like, um, I would make it like a cliff so far that they could like possibly survive the fall. You know what I mean? Or, or, or something to that effect. 
where at least there might be a water or something like that to break it. Maybe, it, you know, it wouldn't be that terrible or where they would just take, because I mean, if you can throw them off a cliff, they're taking, you know, and if it's that suspended, they're taken out of the game. I mean, like, how are they going to get back up if they fall off there, too? You know what I mean? And and that is a shitty way to die when you don't yeah, have yeah. control over the situation and you get pushed off yeah. in a situation like that. It's a shit thing to happen. You know what I mean? Like, you can get dwindled away by hit points and, and be okay with death. Uh, you can get your head bit off by a monster and be all right because you sort of know what you're getting into. But getting shoved off a cliff... Or a bridge, or something like that, you know, chucked into the into the 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 canyon. <laughs> that that is a shit way for a character to die. Like you just you feel helpless, and uh, you know the whole thing is not fun. So this is this is what I would recommend. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I did I, I did a map called um, the Red Red King something or other. It was this game Rise of the yep. Red King was this adventure that yep. I did. I played it. <clears throat> yeah, and so <clears throat> in this adventure. When you go down into the Red King's final uh, underground, he was he was in a crypt underneath the pyramid, and and so the, the premise was uh, his followers were sacrificing themselves to him. He was undead, but uh, he was coming back to life by like sucking the flesh off of his minions. He was you know just putting it on himself, kind of like the Hellraiser mm-hmm. kind of a guy, right? In order to get to that guy, though, you had to cross over. Um, like a lava river kind of a thing. And so you would fight his his minions on one side. You would cross over uh, on these uh, bridges on the other side. And at this point, too, his minions are blindly following him. Like they're blinded by their faith, right? So mm-hmm. they're, they're kind of like zombies at this point. Um, he would suck their flesh off them and then sort of send their undead shambling forms back towards you and to fight you as you, you had to fight your way through them. When you cross the bridge... I had a hard and fast rule. So in ICRPG, there's threats, treats, and timers dice. How the mechanics of this worked out were, if you crossed the bridge and uh, failed your dexterity check, you would end up hanging from the bottom of the bridge. You never immediately fell to your death. You only fell off, but you could pull yourself up the next round. Um, with the cool part is with the threats treat uh, and treats the threats and treats. Uh, I don't know. I'm tongue tied there. With that dice, uh, every you know you roll the d4 and then if it lands on a three in three rounds, you make something interesting happen. So what I would do is I would have this king, this red king would would has this great big whip or a sword or something like that, and he would splash the lava and make like a like a lava um, mm-hmm. ripple wash across everything. So if you happen to be hanging from the bridge. When this thing went off, then then you were dead. But there was never there was never immediate death. You were always hanging from the bottom of mm. and had the ability to pull yourself up, no problem. So yep. I would recommend doing something like that. Um, you want to knock them off the bridge, off a cliff, uh, or a very large cannon. They fall over and grab a twig, and they're and they're doing the whole um, wily e. coyote off the side of the mountain. Kind of a thing, right? With the option to pull themselves back up and get back into the fight, but never, never immediately right, right to death. Uh, if you, if you're trying to kill a character, do do the three strikes, you're out kind of a thing. Like they need to have three back to back fails, and then and then it's like, okay, you know, sorry, your 110 hit point character fell to his death. Uh, mm-hmm. That's how sort of I roll. You, you, you failed three rolls. The dice gods have spoken. Uh, your yeah. time is, you know, you, you, you put your flame out and 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 go to. Uh, you know, get off the island, kind of a thing. Yeah, you know, yeah. If you're if you're on a bridge, you, you know, and you happen to and you have to make agility rolls or dexterity rolls to do it, yeah, don't let them. Or oh, you fail, you know, you're you're dead. You know, they 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 fall, but they're able to pull themselves back up the next round. You know, and some, there's something in that equation. And they're on a cliff. Same thing applies. If they crit fail, maybe you do something a little more dastardly, but Whoa. still, man, that's still you know. You know, like there's nothing, there's nothing worse than just like okay, you're just getting really, really punished for you know, you know, it's losing a character just because you're in a precarious place, and you just yeah. rolled crappy. It's know? like one of those deals, like you're walking down, um, you you're walking down a tunnel hallway and you trip the trap because you didn't see it there, and a stone block falls in your head and turns you into pate, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're like, come on, man, what? Like a ten by ten stone block just fell on my head and turned me into a fucking pancake, and that's it. Right. I'm done because I missed the trap. Where's my agility check to get out of the way? Yeah. I would. Th- here's something too, man, that a lot of people think that if I'm 
walking on a precarious, uh, you know, platform or whatever, I'm being as careful as, as possible. You know, I'm being very cautious. So you, you should have that should that should take into account something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get some kind of benefit because you you're aware of yep. your deadly surroundings. Yep. Yep, and you're being as cautious as possible, and you're being as careful as possible. And you're not, you're not like, man, I'm gonna, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the worm on the on this fucking cliff. You know what, what the fuck? You know, wow, stiff. Um, I it. didn't actually write outro notes on this thing, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna put a pin in this, man. Fuck this place. It's bullshit, and I'm out of here. That's what I'm feeling right now. Yep. Da, da, da. Right. It, it's been an hour. We did some community questions. We got we got a show yeah. out of this deal. Yeah, we gave back. We gave back. Now, 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 now it's time for us. All right, let's see if this is the right song here, Jay. Yep, that's here. I believe you got it. You did I it. Nailed it. Production value just went up a slot. It did, man. We, we're yeah, we're pros. We should take this on the road. Uh, I think so. All right, what do we got here? We're gonna we're gonna drop this down a little bit. Um, that's it for this edition of the Murder Hobo RPG Show. We hope you enjoyed it. And now that we have changed networks, guess what, Jay? Yeah, we care if you enjoyed it. Right, we in actually fact, care. In fact, and in fact, if you're interested in submitting to community questions so you can hear us poke fun at you and not otherwise, answer your questions honestly. You can do so at MurderHoboShow.com. Otherwise, send your hate mail to... Beep, da, something bad. That's all I got. I couldn't think of anything bad. We were actually pretty positive this week. Wow, that, that man, I was, I was, I was waiting for this entire moment, and I just feel like you let me down. I did because I, I was actually, I wasn't angry at the time. Usually, when I'm angry, it like you know stirs in some. I get a little more creative when I'm angry, and I got something to focus on. But I was actually feeling pretty good this episode. Wow, Jay, you're ugly, and your mother dresses you funny. Yeah, you're right. You're, you're 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 not too far off the truth. Are you high? Did you do what? Like, come on, man. <laughs> like I've said before, man. I'm like, am I? All right. Or am I? That's good stuff. <laughs> so, uh, you can also get us on Twitter at the Murder Hobo Show, on YouTube at the Murder Hobo Show, where I show you how to make three dimensional battle maps for role playing in tabletop simulator, among other stuff. Uh, you can watch me do this live on Twitch at the Murder Hobo Show, uh, probably where like some people are. We invite you to come and watch the show. We're going to be doing it Wednesdays at seven, either every week or every other week, depends on you know how we're feeling. Um, schedules, right? Our schedules and stuff like that, because we're busy folks. Uh, your best bet is to catch us on our social media platform of choice, MeWe, at the Tabletop RPG Network. So this is the part where we ask you to check out some of the content creating fellows networks the content creating fellow network members instead and today we would like you to take a look at a fine gentleman who likes to have sexy time and hopes to, hopes to, to do it with a real other person that's uh that's worm food that's your buddy worm food right yeah we did this last week because i told you i didn't yep. change the show notes but that's cool let's yeah. do him again yeah, 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 yeah i don't know yeah do, yeah do him again so yeah tell me about tell me about old worm food uh, Stace is running an Icons game. So we talked about Icons uh, last week. You can check him out on his Twitch channel at twitchtv.wormfood. Uh, he's, yeah, he's doing an Icon superheroes game with Vey from uh, Zovia, with, uh, from Zovia's okay. Maps. Yeah, and then they got a couple other people, which is pretty cool. And so, yeah, they're doing that over there, using Fantasy Grounds and playing Icons, which is pretty sweet. I was on that show for, I did one where I was, um, I can't remember what he was called. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, there you go you can find the other uh, the find the things that we discussed in the show notes organized by most recent at the top over at murderhoboshow.podbean.com yes thanks for listening be sure to tune in next time we're going to talk about the after this cool new setting for uh savage worlds uh, we're going to have another action-packed show where we talk about little uh things we know little to nothing about and sound professional doing it right yep sounds good Take us out with this last bit, Jay. All right. Wow. We've got an intro here at Rambling rolling in there. Rambling. We are out. I'm going to shut that sucker off. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Let me see here, man. Um, crap.